All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning into the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to talk about today on the podcast is do you want to be the victor or the victim? I think life a lot of times comes down to those two things. And I think a lot of us in life have been both of those type of things. I think a lot of times we've succeeded and we're, you know, we've had victories. And then a lot of times we have fallen into, we've been either, you know, fell into a place where we felt rejected, we're failing, all these different types of things, and we almost become a victim of whatever the hell we're involved in. And I'm here to tell you, get that mindset, get rid of that shit. The last thing I believe you want to be in your life is a victim, I'm telling you. And I'm going to get into some different things regarding that, but I'm going to just start off saying, if you look, for instance, at a lot of professional athletes, I'm, I love sports. I don't know if I would think a lot of my fan base or whoever listens to my podcast would probably like sports as well. But if you look at a lot of athletes and a lot of times they get bum wrapped or uh, told they're arrogant or whatever, or they're, you know, regarding their confidence, but they have to have the mindset that they are going to win. At any cost. And a lot of them, I understand, make multi-millions of dollars. A lot of these guys, though, end up on shitty teams, right? You, for the most part, know. I mean, sometimes an underdog may come through, but a lot of athletes know, especially if they're high-ranked in the draft, they're going a lot of times to the shittiest teams. So you have a lot of guys that have probably been very successful in their youth, and we're superstars, and now all of a sudden they have to be humbled. But, I mean, they're, they're making millions, but at the same time, now they are losing, most likely, usually. Not always, but a lot of times they are going to the worst teams, and it, has, it usually takes time for them to build up. And I don't care if it's, I mean, even the biggest superstars in the world usually start off a lot of times on the bottom. They do not go to the top ranking teams. But if you look at their mindset, they, I think a lot of times, I mean, some may quit, you know, during games or, or not have a great career, but a lot keep that mindset that they are going to be victorious. They are going, they are winners and they are going to win. There is no other way they could think and keep up at that level. If you're playing basketball, for instance, a hundred and something games, um, baseball, same thing, tons of games, hockey, never, end. for you to go out and play at a high, high, high level to where they're playing where millions of fans are watching you, paying a lot of money, not only live, on television, every move you make as a professional athlete, for the most part, a lot of times, is being publicly, you know, it's shown. Can you imagine a camera being at your workplace and every move you make People are looking at you, critiquing you, and expecting you to be at this certain level. Not only that, everybody they're going against is at a superhuman level as well. It's not even your job, most likely. It, it really would be like if you were a genius, and then you're going up against a lot of different geniuses. And the reason I'm picking athletes is because one reason is, I always say, the one thing you cannot fake is being a professional athlete. That I can assure you. And I'm just using them as an example. A lot of people can kind of, you know, schmooze their way into a lot of positions in life. They can also have family members that put them in certain positions. They may have friends, colleagues, bullshit. That includes getting into colleges, getting great jobs. You know the right people. A lot of things are going to happen right. When it comes to athletics, you can't bullshit yourself. I mean, you can't bullshit people. You can't all of a sudden, I can't walk into the Olympics and start running. It's preposterous, right? I can't go on a baseball field and have guys winging a ball 100 miles per hour and I'm going to crack one out of the park. It's stupid to even think this. You think you're going to, you're going to go on a football field? You think even as a decent athlete, you're going to get exposed in one second, literally one second. And here's the thing. If you look at your life kind of like an athlete looks at his career where you want to start raising the bar and not be the victim but be the person who just wants to win. Again, that doesn't mean you have to win in everything you're going after. That's not what I'm saying. We're all going to be failing constantly. I talk about that all the time. Life is all about failing. If you're not trying new shit, if if you're trying, I'm sorry, if you're trying new shit constantly, you're failing. Cuz there's if it's new, there's always a lot of people where most likely it's not new to them. So they usually have an added, you know, 
it, it, they have that level of whatever it is, they've done it a lot more than you have. So they, they're just better at it usually a lot of times. That's just like when you go to a new job, you get there, most likely you're not the superstar. You don't know what's going on. You're depending on other people giving you information. There's people higher ranked than you. That could be even back to sports. You go on a certain team, even though you may be a superstar, a great athlete, very quickly you don't know you know what plays you're going to or the way things are ran in that, you know, in that uh, team, for instance. But when you look at your life, you really have to look at every day where you want to keep succeeding. You want to keep educating yourself. You do not want to fall in the place where you are like you're getting you're getting things by not being, I guess you could say strong enough, or people start having an identity of you being weak, I think. And I also think a lot of times when people are a victim or had the victim mentality, they kind of become manipulators. They don't want to admit that, but they seem to be getting more out of people than if they were just, you know, trying to do better. Because by being a victim, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, I feel so bad for you. Uh, you, you, This shouldn't be happening to you. Or here, I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to help you do that. And we all need help, right? I get that. And sometimes if you're injured or you may have mental illness or you may... Uh, whatever the, I'm not talking that type of victim either, or, and that's a legit, you know what I mean? That's a different scenario. I'm talking about the average Joe who walks around always either complaining or always pretending things don't go their way. Every time you talk to them in a discussion, it's usually the problem is, I can't believe this happened to me. What should I do? Blah, 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 right? And I again, I get we're lost at certain times in our life, But if you start looking at yourself as a victim, you are slowly, I think, going to spiral into almost, especially as you get older, not only do I think it takes a mental toll on you, I also think people start to become a physical victim where no matter what, they start coming up with excuses why they can't do certain things. And a lot of them may not even be true. You just start putting a lot of these things in your head. Now, I always say, when people say no, right? Because most of your life is going to be consisted as a child all the way as an adult. No. So a lot of people don't even realize that like you know to themselves or know when you want to go do things. You may want a bigger house. You go try to get a loan. They're going to be like, no, you can't afford this. Oh, I want a Ferrari. Oh, sorry. You don't have the money. No. Uh, And that goes for if you have kids or you have a lot of things in your life, you're going to be hearing the word no, or you're going to be shut down a lot. Boo hoo for you. Too bad. You've got to learn to fight for what you want to have. Not just lay down and hope that something is going to come your way because most likely it is not coming your way. I can assure you that. You've got to fight for whatever you want. Set an example, especially if you have kids. I see a lot of parents playing the victim role a lot of times. And I'll just throw it out there. So my daughters both have um, illnesses, physical. My youngest daughter had a liver transplant when she was younger. I'm sorry, my oldest daughter has the liver transplant. My youngest daughter has type 1 diabetes. The one thing is I never want my kids to look at, like, look at me. And I've had some down times, believe me, when I, I couldn't make it in the film industry the way I wanted. I had a lot of things just collapse on me and things not going my way. And I, I mean, I was down in the dumps. But my kids still know that I want not only the best for them, but myself. I have to show them that I'm not going to give up on myself, on them, or anyone. A lot of parents I see that have sick children, and I know that's very hard, especially depending on the level that it is, right? But you want to show your kids that you are not taking on what they are going through a lot of times. You are not going to become a victim. I believe, especially with my oldest daughter, where people kept telling me, you know, she can't do this because she had a liver transplant. She can't go here. She can't do that. I said, that's bullshit. I will never treat her any differently than any, any kid I had. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to put her in arm's way, you know, or harm's way. That I'm not going to do. But for instance, like they said she couldn't play sports because of this or that. All she wanted to do was play sports. And all we did was play sports. Obviously, I'm not going to put her in a sport where it's going to hurt her. But I'm just... This is just an example. I did not want my daughter 
or daughters ever to look at themselves as being a victim. Still don't. My oldest daughter, huge in the fitness, huge. My other daughter, my youngest daughter, she's, she, like, she's just a go-getter. She's a monster. She loves business. Neither one of them, I'm going to sit around and let them become a victim. Now, if they do that on their own, they can do it. But I'm not going to let them think I feel sorry for them. But here's the thing. Truthfully, I was shattered. I'm still very, I do feel sorry for them a lot of times because of what they're going through. But for me to sit there and, uh, and here's the thing that a lot of people used to say to me is, Rich, oh my God, I feel so bad for you. What are the odds of you having one sick kid? Oh, what are the odds of you having two sick kids or whatever? I really didn't look at them for one, for being sick. I mean, it's not like it's 1900s and we couldn't, you know, we saved our daughter's life with a liver transplant, type one diabetes, you know, you can handle it. It's not easy. Feel sorry for me. What the hell are you feeling sorry for me for? I, I've lived an amazing life. I'm healthy. My parents are healthy, but we all, you know, and what's quite interesting is not only did my, one of my daughters end up with diabetes, two of my first cousin's kids ended up with it as well. We have no idea how this happened. But when my, my daughter was the first one to actually have the liver transplant and get sick, and I have like hundreds of family members, they were all in shock, I guess you could say, right? Because they, I think a lot of families on both sides of mine were like, how did this happen to us? It happens, right? Illnesses are going to happen. Accidents are going to happen. Shit is going to happen. How you react to that is everything. And people are always like, I can't believe how strong you are. I can't believe the way you handled it. Well, how am I supposed to handle it? If I'm showing my kids while they're growing up to, to, to be a victim or if I'm pretending to be a victim, what does that do for anybody, right? And even if you don't have kids, if you're walking around constantly feeling sorry for yourself and there's really nothing really that wrong with you, physically or mentally, that's on you, man. You've got to kick it in the ass. In my Mastering Self-Confidence program, I believe confidence is basically the backbone of everything. If you don't have confidence in yourself or what you're doing or what you plan on doing, everything else is a waste of time. You are wasting your time, man. If you think like being weak or uh, timid or, you know, whatever the case may be. Now, if you're, here's the other thing. If you are shy, for instance, or you are introverted or whatever the case may be, you're not that outgoing and things, you know, are harder for you. You have anxiety. I, listen, I I feel for you and I get it. But you still have to try to reprogram your brain into thinking you are strong and you're powerful and you can do really what you want to do or at least try it. And, and don't, here's the thing too, a lot of times we want to bullshit ourselves or our kids or people to say, you know what, go out, you can do anything you want to do. That's not necessarily always the truth because that's, I've talked about this before, if I, I'm 50 years old. Do you think I could go out and be a middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears or a running back? That was my dream when I was younger. Do you, no, that's preposterous. I would get decimated. But if I do love football, I could maybe possibly become a coach, a referee, umpire, whatever the case may be. I could go work for an affiliation that works with the team, whatever the case may be. There are ways of finding things you love to do that maybe are out of your realm. You know, if you want to be a basketball player and you're only five foot tall and you can't jump or shoot, it kind of, don't bullshit yourself, I'm just telling you. That doesn't mean, again, you become a victim and feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your life because you can't play basketball. Too bad for you, move on and kick it in the ass. Again, are you the victor or the victim? Get the victim shit out of your head. The minute you don't feel sorry for yourself, I promise you your life's going to change. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have down days. We're all going to have good days, bad days, blah, blah, blah. But every day you get kicked in the ass, kick it right back, right? Because it's all on you. No one can do anything for you, really, to a certain degree. You have to do it yourself. Sure, someone could give you a better job. Someone could say a lot of kinder words to you. Someone can do something for you. Now, if somebody gave you a billion dollars or something or millions of dollars, God bless, that's far and few between. But I'm saying even if someone gives you something, you still have to become the victor and have the confidence to keep going and moving forward because a lot of times people do give you a lot of opportunities, especially sometimes victims. And instead of taking that opportunity and running with it, 
they almost become a victim again inside a great opportunity. How does that work out usually? Usually not too good. So anyways, I just want to do a podcast on that. Stop being a goddamn victim and stop lying to yourself and stop making yourself feel weak or thinking that you're weak or thinking that you're dumb or thinking that everything is out of your realm or thinking you don't deserve certain things. All that is bullshit. I don't know. Maybe you grew up being programmed that way and I talk about that all the time, but you've got to learn to reprogram yourself. Just because someone told you that you weren't whatever, you you weren't smart enough, you weren't this, you weren't that, because I lived that growing up. Everything, I was the worst student I ever met. And I literally want to drop out of, I I didn't want to drop out of high school. I want to drop out of junior high, which that may sound crazy. I despise school. I talk about my mother and my father because my dad owned a nightclub my whole life. So I go from visiting him in a nightclub, all this action. And then all of a sudden now I'm sitting in this classroom with these teachers opening these books. My life went from, and not only was I in a nightclub, my father would take me to see all famous, you know, uh, musicians, artists. We go to the best movies, the best restaurants, this type of adult lifestyle. And then all of a sudden I'm supposed to fall into this child lifestyle or whatever you want to say, grade school, junior high. But I felt like someone put the brakes on me. I also loved athletics and sports. Now everybody is telling me I have to sit down and I can't move for six, seven hours at a time. It made me bonkers. And my teachers used to tell me too, like, like I wrote two books, which I'm not saying they're even great books, but my teachers used to tell me, you you most likely literally used to tell me you're going to probably end up uh, a garbage man. I heard that numerous times and nothing against garbage men. I'm sure there's, I think garbage men are incredible. I mean, I I don't know about anybody else, but those guys work harder than ever. Or they said I would have to go uh, work for maybe, you know, uh, um, a low level government job, which that whatever, like work for the city or the state. And again, I'm not dismissing that. I think those guys are amazing too. I don't even know. I used to kind of look at a teacher and say, what kind of effort, if you're so brilliant or smart, why aren't you getting a higher paid job, right? You sit around and talk shit all day. And a lot of the things you're teaching are outdated. Your books are kind of outdated. When you were taught things, you were taught by people that were outdated. That was just my mindset, which was very arrogant. But my point being is, If I went and kept carrying that shit throughout my life, how would I have done whatever I did? I I mean, I look back now. I said I made books. I made a couple movies. um, I have a couple children. I've I've done a lot of things that I'm actually very proud of. It took me a long time to look back. And I've even been at a point where um, I felt like everything I was doing was failing because it wasn't at the level that I expected to be at. But you know what? That may come and it may not, but for that to hold me down is ridiculous because I don't think a lot of people realize when you start falling into the victim routine, you become a lot of times miserable or your manipulation tactics or you become an anchor, I call it to everybody, you just kind of bring everybody else down or you're trying to bring them down to your level. Instead, you should be bringing yourself up or at least trying to and raising the level of everyone else. That's just my theory on it. And again, that doesn't mean that we're not going to have down times. I understand sometimes things happen to us financially, physically. And what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between something bad happening and you trying to fight your way through it and, you know, on, on a strong, healthy way than just sitting there and expecting everyone to kind of take care of you. And uh, that's just my theory on it. So I'm going to wrap it up there. You might want to also uh, check out some of my stuff on YouTube. I've been doing a lot of stuff on fitness. I've been even showing videos that I do regarding working out, chest routines, back, tries, buys. Uh, I also travel all over North America. I've been putting up some of my favorite Italian restaurants, my favorite gyms, things in that nature, and my Mastering Self-Confidence program. It's masteringselfconfidence.com. Or you could go to richchalenza.com to see that. Uh, That leads you to everything I'm doing. And again, I want to start doing more funnier stuff on the podcast, but I've been looking at my ranking systems. And when I do these type of talks or whatever, it just seems to kind of move way up on it. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going with this podcast, to say the least. But I definitely want to start interview, interviewing more people regarding this, uh, certain subjects. And this is one of them. But please have the confidence in yourself to... Just not feel sorry for yourself. Believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, I promise you others will believe in you as well. 
And like I was saying earlier, if you have kids, set the example. Uh, again, I've seen so many parents try, they become a victim, they try to almost transfer their kids into being a victim, or they have siblings and all this type of shit. Get rid of it, kick it in the ass, all right? All right, you can also find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So if you're traveling, safe travels, and I wish you nothing but the best.